This is a short video about section 5.2.2 in Stein's Elementary Number Theory book. And it's about the sequence of partial conversions. And so in the previous video, our setup has been looking at um, a continued fraction where a0 through am are just some real numbers, say. And um, for an index smaller than m, kind of like we truncate this continued fraction, we're going to look at, we'll call it cn. And again, I'm just truncating or in other words, stopping this continued fraction at the nth slot, right? A slot before it ends. And we'll call this uh, a partial convergent. And the way that we'll denote it is Pn over Qn. And you might remember from the previous video that Pn and Qn have um, some kind of a recursive formula. And just because it's not too far away, if you'll allow me, I'll scroll up. It's just to remind you in the textbook where it is. Uh, here is the recursive formula for how do you calculate the Pn's and the Qn's based on just the uh, a's in the continued fraction. And so what we're gonna look at is we're gonna analyze these fractions Pn over Qn a little bit more. And uh, what are we supposed to notice here? So these numbers that I have listed right here are the partial convergence for this continued fractions, 2, 1, 2, 1, 1, 4, 1, 1, 6, et cetera. And uh, what I want to draw attention to is maybe some kind of a pattern between uh, kind of what's going on every other index. So I've grouped the even indices, C0, C2, C4, C6, C8, those are blue. And just down below to make it a little bit easier, uh, the textbook just uh, wrote them in their decimal representation uh, because what you wanna notice about the blues is the blue numbers are increasing, right? They always are getting to be a little bit more. Two, 2.66, 2.7, 2.7 plus a little more, 2.7 plus a little more than that. So the blue ones are always increasing. And similarly, or maybe dissimilarly, um, the red ones, where notice that those are the partial uh, the partial convergence that uh, have odd indices, so the indices are one, three, five, seven, et cetera. Those, when I look at the uh, decimal representation of them, it's easy to see that these numbers are decreasing as I move farther out into the sequence of partial convergence. And uh, what we're gonna do in this video is we're gonna look in SAGE, uh, how do we visualize this? And then this will of course be a theorem. That's um, that behavior where the even indices, uh, the, the, the partial convergence with even indices are always increasing and the partial convergence with odd indices are always decreasing, that's a fact, that's a theorem. So it's not something that's peculiar to the specific continued fraction two, one, blah, blah, blah. All right, but let's just try to visualize this behavior a little bit, and how do you do that in Sage? Now, uh, in this example, 5.2.12, um, it's not the same continued fraction as above. So notice it's an easy continued fraction with just ones everywhere. So like these fractions up here are not the partial convergence for this guy. So that's one thing to be careful of, kind of mix a random one up. And another thing too is that uh, this is 2021 when I'm talking to you, and instead of PN and QN here, these have been changed as far as I know, to numerator, and this one is denominator. And so what I wanna do is just kinda of go through, uh, maybe line by line, I'll open the Sage worksheet, uh, and then we'll just type these things in and see what uh, each line really does. And so I have uh, got my worksheet here, and so if I type C uh, is equal to, um, what, continued fraction, and I'm looking at, uh, one, how many ones are there? I think there's eight of them. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, and then right below that here, V. What V is, V is gonna be kind of like a list of points. So we're gonna make it a list, so that's why we're using these kind of hard brackets here. And so I'm gonna make a list of like ordered pairs. So I is the first coordinate. So like my horizontal axis is gonna be like my indices, which are my, my natural numbers, including zero. I'm the type of person that doesn't regard zero as a natural number. That's my problem though. So I is the first coordinate of my point and the Y coordinate of my point will be the uh, actual partial conversion. And the way that we're gonna write that, remember it's gonna be C dot, but now you're gonna put numerator and then parentheses that index divided by C dot denominator, and then in parentheses that index. So that's the Y coordinate. And so what we're doing is we're making a list of ordered pairs. So this I is some kind of a variable that's gonna range over some, uh, it's gonna have a range to it, I guess I should say. So for I in range, however long C is. So len C. And do I have enough parentheses? I just need those two. Cool. 
All right, so then maybe just for right now, I'll just say show uh, p dot show. I don't know, I guess I gotta make them points. So that just stores the list. Now I wanna like turn this into a graph, turn it into geometry. So I'm looking at kind of the, the third line down where p equals point. So p equals points. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna make a point out of each ordered pair in my list. So v, we can change the color to whatever we want. So uh, RGB color equals, I'll just do the same one the book does because I'm not very creative. And then uh, we can also say how big we want the points to be. So point size equals, I'll just keep it at 40 though. And uh, let's just see what does this do so far. So now I could do something like p.show and then open parentheses here and then I'll click run and I'll cross my fingers that it gives me something. All right, cool. So if I'm, uh, what is this, right? This just plots all the points. And so you could see, here's the graph below. We've con constructed part of it. So this much of it just constructed the points. And maybe now what we could do is, maybe I wanna connect the dots. Uh, and so let's go ahead and connect the dots. And that's what the uh, L, L line of the code is here. So I'll go back here, I'll go down below, and I'll, let's say what L is. So L should be, we're gonna make a line, and the points on the line are just gonna be the ones that are in my list V. And, and so it's kind of a simple command, line, uh, open parentheses, V, comma, and then again, I can change it to whatever color I want. And so uh, RGB color equals, and then so these 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, that'll just make it red. And uh, maybe I wanna update. So now I wanna show P and L, so I'll just do P plus L dot show. And if I run that, good, it connects the lines. So I guess when it's 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, it's not red after all, it's just black. I guess it's kinda, maybe it's kinda gray. It's kinda gray actually, yeah. And maybe the last thing that I'll do is, uh, how do we get that red line in there? That's the command for L2. And so uh, when I go ahead and do L2, L2 looks like, what do I type in? Line, and I'm gonna make a line out of the following points from zero over to C dot value. So that's gonna be whatever the actual real number that this continued fraction represents. So not the convergence. In other words, what do the convergence converge to? You can think about it as the limit. And I'll, I'll say a little bit more about that in a minute. So that's what I want the points, the Y coordinates of the points to always be. And now I'm getting lost in my parentheses here. And then I've gotta do len, oh, that's not enough parentheses. Oh, I see I missed one, that's why. So zero comma C dot value. Now I've got enough parentheses. And then len C minus one. Oh, I need more parentheses though. Man, parentheses, there's so many. Len C minus one, C dot value. Uh, and then one more and then bracket. And then you see in the book too, like uh, it just, that little slash there is just like extra space to go to the next line. You don't have to do that. So you can just comma thickness equals 0 0.5. And uh, again, change the color to whatever you want. So RGB color, now I'm assuming when I do equals uh, 0 0.7, so it's kind of red there. And then now if I want L2 to show up in the graph, down here where P plus L is, I'll just say plus L2 also. And I don't think it matters where you put L2, so I'll just do L2 plus P plus L dot show. And you can change the window around in the show, inside the parentheses for show, kind of like you see the book does, tells me about an X minimum and a Y minimum. Let's just see what it looks like without that. So I'll go ahead and run this part of the code now. And cool, so we just recreated this graph from the book. And uh, what are we supposed to, to notice here? Let me go back to the actual copy of the book that I can write on now though. So thanks for bearing with me as I scroll around here. So um, remember the partial fraction, the partial convergence we're denoting by C's, but remember C0 is really P0 over Q0. This is C1, which is really P1 over Q1. This is uh, C2, which is uh, P2 over Q2, et cetera. But uh, what do I wanna get at? Maybe if I could, I think I color the odd indices this color, and what do I want you to notice? If I just follow the pink dots, they're always decreasing, and that's the fact that we said earlier. And if I just follow the blue dots, where these are the partial convergence that have even indices, right? You see the index is two, it's four, it's six, it's zero on the first one over here. The point is though, it's got kind of this increasing behavior. And again, that's what we said. The partial convergence with even indices are increasing. So this is just a nice way to visualize that. And of course, the theorem, how do you actually prove that rigorously? It's proposition 5.2.13. And the theorem goes and uses uh, some of the kind of uh, 
um, recursive relationships that we've seen or that we maybe touched on or, or at least pointed to in a previous video about the behavior of the partial convergence here. And so you could take a look in Stein's number theory book about the proof. And the main thing I wanted to cover in this video is just a little update to the partial fractions commands in SAGE and just thinking about what is this picture trying to tell us.